Hello, everyone. My name is Han Zhang. I'm from Rutgers University. It is my pleasure today to present our work on Stagen, text to photorealistic image synthesis. This is the joint work with researchers from Rutgers University, Lehigh University, the Chinese University of Hong Kong, and Baidu. The task we are dealing with is to automatically synthesize realistic images from human written descriptions. Recently, generative adversarial networks has shown promising results in image generation tasks, and it has also been used for text-to-image synthesis. However, due to the unstable training behavior of GAN, it is very hard for the previous models to generate high-quality images, especially when conditioned only on the text descriptions. To address this challenge, we propose a two-stage stack generative adversarial networks to draw high-quality images through a novel sketch refinement process. As shown in this slide, first, given a test description, our stage one can first sketch the basic shape and color of the object, and the stage two can take the stage one result and the text description again to generate a higher resolution image. Here is the overview of our approach. It has three major components, the condition augmentation, stage one GAN, and stage two GAN. I will walk through each component next. So as the start of the pipeline, given a test description, a global sentence embedding is first extracted using a pre-trained text encoder, such as character level ComNet. However, the sentence embedding is usually high dimensional, given limited amount of training data, it usually causes discontinuity in the latent manifold, which is not desirable for learning the generator. To mitigate this problem, we propose conditioning augmentation. That is, instead of directly using the deterministic text embedding, we sample the condition variable from a Gaussian distribution, where the mean and the standard deviation are both functions of the text embedding. As shown in this slide, first, a fully connected layer is built to compute the mean and the standard deviation. And then the condition variable is sampled using the reparameterization trick. Using that, this technique, it allows small perturbations along the condition manifold, thus produce small training samples given limited amount of image text pairs. Once we get the condition variable, we can fed it through the stage one gain to generate the low resolution image. As shown here, the condition variable is first contaminated with a noise vector and then reshaped into 2D and fed through a series of upsampling blocks to generate the 64 by 64 images. And the stage one discriminator first encode image through several downsampling blocks and then contaminated with the test, group, test embedding and fed through more convolutions to get the decision score. During training, we minimize equation one and equation two alternately. At the end of training, stage one, GAN is able to generate low resolution images. However, the generated samples usually contain shape distortions and also lack some details. So we build a stage two GAN to generate high resolution image with better image qualities. As shown in this slide, the stage two GAN first take the stage one result and fast through several downsampling blocks to extract the useful image features. In addition, we also input the text embedding again to the stage two discriminator. Here, the conditioning augmentation is also used, but the parameters is not shared with the stage one generator. By doing this, we make the neural network to extract the useful complementary information that is omitted by the stage one generator. Then we visually replicated the text embedding, the text feature with the image feature, and concatenated them along the channel dimension. And then we fed through the residue blocks to learn the multi-model representations. Finally, we can generate a higher resolution image by fed through several upsampling blocks. The structure of the stage two discriminator is similar with that of the stage one discriminator with extra downsampling blocks. Since the, since the image size is larger in this stage. So in the end, the stage two GAN is able to crack defects, complete details, and produce photorealist images with four times higher resolution. So far, we have seen the details about stack GAN. 
Next, let, let's see some experimental results. We validate our stack again on text to image generation on three benchmark data sets. For evaluation, we adopt inception score and human rank as the evaluation metric to assess the result of different baselines and our methods. As you can see from these slides, our stack again achieves the state of the art result for all three data sets. Compared to the baseline models, our stack again for the first time generates 256 by 256 images from the test descriptions. Here we show some differences between the stage one images and the stage two images. As shown in this example, with the satisfactory stage one result, stage two can focus on drawing the short beak and white color described in the text, as well as the tails for the details for the tail and legs. If the stage one has some errors, stage two can is able to correct those errors by processing the test description again. Here is another example. While well, the stage one image has a blue crown rather than the reddish crown described in the text, those defects is corrected by the stage two GAN. Generally speaking, stage one image usually have the rough shapes and basic color of the object, and the stage two image usually add more convincing details to better reflect the corresponding test descriptions. We also validate the design of our stack again by conduct some ablation studies. As shown in this example, without using conditioning augmentation, even we use different noise vector for each column, the one stage can collapse to be the same meaningless samples. But when we use the conditioning augmentation, even when we fix the noise vector for each column, both one stage gun and stack gun succeed in generating birds with different poses and viewpoints. Clearly, stack gun is better than the stage one gun by processing the test description again. Here is another example. To prove that our stack gun learns a smooth latent data manifold, we use it to generate samples from linearly interpolated sentence embeddings. As shown here, the generated image images clearly reflect the color changes in the text descriptions, but also maintain a reasonable birth shape. Here is another example. In this experiment, we retrieve the top five nearest neighbors of the generated samples in the training set. In the left column, this is the generated samples, and the rest column are the images from the training set. By visualizing these images, we can see that our generated samples do share some similar image characteristics with the images in the training set, but they are essentially different. From these two experiments, we can see that our state again is able to generate high resolution image, not by simply memorizing the training samples. But since so far we have seen that state again is able to generate high quality images, but I wa don't want to give you the impression that the text to image synthesis problem is solved. In fact, in some cases, our stack and still generates meaningless samples, especially when the stage one result is in a collapsed mode. To address this problem, we did a follow-up work. In, in that work, we, we proposed a multi-stage stack again to jointly approximate multiple data distributions. By doing this, we add more regularizations to each subtask to reduce the chance of mode collapse. We have uploaded this paper to our cloud. Please take a look if you are interested. To sum up, in this work, we proposed stack generative adversarial networks for synthesizing high resolution images from text descriptions. Compared to the baseline models, our stack again first generates, first for the first time, generates images of 256 by 256 resolutions with photorealistic details from the text descriptions. The proposed Conditioning augmentation is able to stabilize conditional, conditional gain training and improve the diversity of the generated samples. And it can also be useful for potential impact towards modeling the creativity. Our code is online. Thanks for the attention. I'm happy to take the questions. Thank you. We have time for one or two questions. 
can't so, what? Yeah. Can I ask? Yeah. So I have one quick question regarding the, the evaluation. Yeah. So you use inception score on human ranking, uh, but shouldn't you measure whether the generated image actually captures the, the content of the text description? Yeah, so that's a good question. For the original inception score, it basically evaluates the image quality. So that's why we conduct human evaluation. For the, hu for the human evaluation, it, it needs to uh, assess whether first it is a realistic image, and the second is that whether the generated image is conditioned on the text. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, thank you.